Okay, welcome to part three. Uh, in this part, what we're going to do is make a start on creating the user system. So this is going to allow users to log in and you know check their messages. Uh, so what we're going to do is start off by creating the users table. Uh, I'm working in this private message system uh, database here. Um, so what we're going to do is just create a new table. Um, sorry, a new database. Wait, yeah, a new table, <laughs> not a new database. I've created a new database. We can now create a new table. Uh, and the table is going to be called users because I'm imaginative and it's going to have uh, just three columns which are going to be the user ID, the user name and the user password so in here we're going to have the user ID the user name and the user password so the user ID is going to be an integer of length 8 because we're most likely not going to have more than that many nines users. Um, the it also has to be set to be the primary index and auto incrementing because we want this to go up by one for every user that we add to the table. Um, just because this is meant to be a unique number and it's not unique if it just is the same value all the time. So yeah, that's why we're doing that. The user name we're going to set to a varchar of length twenty uh, because most people have fairly short usernames. Just seemed like a logical number. Uh, and varchar essentially means string, you know, letters, not numbers. Okay, the password is going to be set to a um, another varchar of length 40. Um, just another sort of side note on MySQL things. Um, the difference between var, varchar and char, which is somewhere down here, there, by the way, is that varchar stands for variable, variable length characters or something like that. So essentially it's the same. Um, as a char, except that its length can vary. Um, you can obviously store a shorter string in a char, except the leftover data, you know, the space is kind of wasted. So, say if you store three characters in this 40 character length char type, um, the you know remaining 37 characters of worth of you know storage space will just be wasted and left to do nothing. Whereas with varchar, those those will be sort of used for other things. Um, so if you have a table uh, which is, I'm not sure why I'm talking about this, but anyway, I'm just going to say it. So if you have a table that has a lot of strings um, that are all the same, going to be the same length. So in the case of password, it's going to be encrypted and always level length 40. So if you have a lot of strings like that, then setting it to char is, you know, it makes sense. However, uh, MySQL stores the data in rows or something along those lines, so it only actually makes a f makes an effect in terms of performance uh, because chars are slightly quicker because MySQL doesn't have to do any sort of calculations. It only makes a difference in terms of performance if they're all set to char and you don't have any var chars. So, yeah, that's that. Anyway, don't worry about that too much. I probably should have said that before I said it, but anyway. Okay, so there you go. That's our database pretty much set up. So I'm just going to scroll down and click save. So there we go, we've got our users table. So because we're not going to be making a register, register system for this, because that's something I covered previously, um, I'm going to go ahead and add an example user to test the login system. So I'm just going to insert a new row, and I'm going to set myself as the username, and my password is going to be an SHA1. Um, and we can actually find, without, we don't have to like go online and find an SHA1 creator. Um, we can just set function in here to SHA1 and then MySQL will create the SHA1 hash of whatever you type in this box. So I'm going to set my password to hmm and I'm going to click on go like so. Sorry, my chair is squeaking. And you can see that MySQL has created the SHA1 hash and put it in this password box. Okay, so that is our database pretty much set up. So the next thing we need to do is create our um, sort of login code. Okay, so in the init file, what we need to do is um, check to make sure that the user is logged in, and if they're not, um, send them to a page, um, like a forbidden page, which is going to be actually the login page in this case. Um, because the idea here is that when the user sort of browses to their inbox, if they're not logged in, they can't really be there, because that doesn't make any sense. So we're going to force them to be logged in for all pages other than the login page. Okay, very straightforward. Um, and the way we're going to be storing the fact that the user is logged in is just the simple method of using the session. So to, to use the session, we need to first start the session. So just here I'm going to do session 
start. And all this does is sort of set up the, um, well, it tells PHP that we need the session. It makes the session work, essentially. Um, because obviously it's a fairly expensive thing to do. It involves quite a lot of files. Well, it involves one file and a cookie. but um, So it's a bit of an expensive thing to do, so it, it has to be opted into, I guess. Anyway, underneath this, we're going to do a simple check. Um, and the way we're going to be defining that the user is logged in is the fact that they have a session variable that contains their user ID. So the way we check to see if they're, they are logged in, or they're not logged in, I guess, um, is to check to see if the session ID, their user ID, is empty. So we're going to do if empty session user ID. If it is empty, um, we want to, well, at the moment, this means if they're not logged in, then we're going to do the, you know, you're not logged in, click here to log in type thing here. Um, but we don't want this to happen for the login page because this will create a sort of redirect loop because we're actually going to be redirecting them inside here. So what we need to do is go to our, well, up here, and we need to add another condition to make sure that get page is not equal to login. And we don't need to check to make sure that get page exists here because we've already done that here. If get page isn't set, or it's set to an invalid page even, they'll be redirected to the inbox, um, which this does not satisfy. But anyway, so inside of here, once we've determined they are not logged in, we're going to use the header function again to redirect them to the login page. So we're going to do the location header once more to send them to index.php page equals login. We're also going to send the HTTP header as before, except this time we're not going to use 404, we're going to use 403 because they're not allowed to access the inbox page. That's what 403 means, it's forbidden. Um, access denied essentially. So HTTP slash 1.1 403 forbidden. Okay. Um, and also because we're redirecting them, like I said before, we don't need to run any of the code below this, so we can just kill the script with die, like so. So that's that done, and we can just test this out by going back to our browser, and going back to our here, and we'll just try to go to the inbox page, and that worked, weirdly. Um, actually, I think I might still be logged in, so just bear with me while I log out. Okay, yeah, I was still logged in from my previous testing, my session was still active. Um, so that's why that didn't quite work, but I've fixed that now, I've logged out um, in a sort of annoying, awkward manual way. Um, so I'm going to reload the page and we should see that I really get, get redirected to the uh, login page, which I do, so that's good. So whatever the user tries to do to get to the like inbox page, they will always be re redirected back to login. And their browser will be sent a 403 forbidden header. Okay, so that's that. So now we need to actually code the stuff to let them log in. Um, and we're actually going to do this in the init file because we need to um, redirect them somewhere after they have logged in. And um, we can't do that after some sort of, after some um, output has already started because um, headers have to come above output. I've said that before, so I'm not going to go over it too much. Anyway, so let's go to our. Um, uh, init file and we'll code that. So just under the session start what we need to do is make sure that the user has actually submitted a login sort of thing and remember that this init.ink.php is included above all pages um, because it's included in index.php um, and that means that we can actually submit the login information to any URL at all as long as it is a valid page whereas this will happen before Sorry, chair again. Otherwise, this will happen before the login is checked. So as long as it's a valid page, you could submit the form there. Uh, I just kept it as login for the sake of it, really. Okay, it's really annoying. Okay, um, this is going to require some editing. Right, so what we need to do is check to make sure that the user has submitted the form. So we're going to do a simple if is set post user name and post user password like so 
and if they have submitted the form we're going to do the if they entered the correct user information down here and if they did we're going to redirect them to the uh, inbox page and we're also going to set their um, we're going to set their um, session so that when we do this check it fails and they can stay logged in essentially right so that's uh, pretty much that. So what we need to do is create a function to check a given username and password combination. Now this function is going to use the MySQL database so obviously we need to open a connection to it. So just above this check here under session start we're going to use the MySQL connect function to connect to the database. It takes three parameters. The first one being the server you want to connect to which for me, for me is this and the second one is the password sorry, the username and the final one is the password which for me are that and that. Okay, so then we're going to use the MySQL select DB function to um, tell the database server which database it we want to work with and this is just private message system which is that table, sorry, that database that we created the um, users table table in a moment ago. Okay, so that's that done. What we can do now is just reload this to make sure the connection worked, which it did, otherwise we would have seen an error. So that's good. So now what we can do is go to our back end file for the user system, which is not open, which is awkward, but never mind. Let's go to our core folder and the ink folder and the user system. Okay, so here it is, and as you can see at the moment it's completely blank. Um, so what we're going to do is code a function to check to make sure that a given username and password combination is valid. So we're going to call this function valid, wait, validate credentials, and it's going to take two parameters: the first one being the username, and the second one being the user password. Okay, so that's that. So we need to make sure that this data is safe for use in an SQL query. So for the username, we're going to apply the MySQL real escape string function, which is as well as being a bit of a mouthful, um, it escapes any control characters that would have meaning to the MySQL server and makes them safe to use in an SQL string. Um, I do have a video on that if you're not entirely sure what I mean. So I recommend that. Um, for the password, we don't have to escape it at all because we're converting it to an SHA1 hash, which um, can only ever be made up of numbers and letters, which is always going to be safe. So for the password, we just need to do SHA1 user password. Okay, so that's that. Those variables are now safe to use. Um, just something to be aware of. Um, which I actually have just made a mistake here. I should be user name, not user user. I'm not really sure what I was thinking there. Um, something to be aware of, uh, sorry, aware of, is that if you misspell this variable, so say if you had, oops, <laughs> say if you had that, if you made a typo, this actually leaves open an SQL injection vulnerability. Because when you do it properly, like that, what you're doing is applying the MySQL real escape string function to the variable, and then assigning the result of that back to itself, the variable. Well, if you do this, what you're doing is applying MySQL real escape string to the variable and then assigning it to a variable, a different variable. However, then you'll probably go ahead in your SQL and use this, which still contains the unescaped value. So it's just something to be a little bit aware of. Typos can cause security problems. Anyway, what we need to do down here is run a query to uh, well, actually what we're going to do is get the user ID, but I'll explain the user for that, sorry, the reason for that in a little bit. Uh, well, in a moment. So, yeah. So to check to make sure that the user exists with this username and password combination, we're going to run the SQL um, to get their user ID. And this just saves us a query, because we need to get the user ID anyway. Um, so if we do it like this, we can just do these two things in one query. Very straightforward. Okay, so what we're going to do is run a MySQL query using the SQL select user ID from users 
where user name equals the username and the user password equals the password. So just inside these two strings I've left blank for now what we need to do is fix that typo and we need to put in the two variables. So this is the username variable and then this one is the user password variable. Okay, And we need to store the result of this because we actually want to fetch the value so I'm just going to set a new variable called result equal to that query. I'm going to put the M back that I just somehow deleted. Okay, so that's that done. So what we need to do now is check the number of rows this has returned. So if this returns any like zero rows, that means this user doesn't exist or they got their password wrong. So we can do if MySQL num rows of results, which just returns the number of rows that that query returns. Um, and if it's not equal to one, we're going to return false, which means this user does not exist or you know they got the password wrong. Um, however, after this if, um, i.e. if it is only one row returned, that means the user is correct, so the result of the query will be their user ID. So I'm just going to return that. So I'm going to return MySQL result, which just fetches the value of a single cell. Um, and we're using the result, the query result, which I called result, and we want row zero. Okay, so that is pretty much that. So what this function will now do is take a username and password combination. Uh, it'll run a query to make sure. Well, it'll try and get the user ID. If that user ID was not found for that username and password combination, it'll just return false, meaning that user hasn't been found. Um, if the user is found, it'll return the user's ID. So we can set the return value of this function to the um, value that is you know, used in the session. Um, and just the final thing I'm going to do in this part is add a comment to this function just to, for future reference so we know what it does. Um, checks a given username and password combination returning the user's ID. And that probably should have one of those. I don't know how they work. Right, so that's enough of that. And in the next part, which will be part four, I'm going to explain how we use this function and then I'm going to demonstrate it because that should be the end of the login system. Okay, so thank you for watching and come back for part four.